And, and do you think that... Um, obviously us seeing more of the younger royals. Is that part of the leaning out and the modernising of the royal family that we've spoken so much about? Yes, certainly, I think so. I mean, they are the future. I mean, it seems uh, pretty obvious to say that, but they are the ones that are going to be carrying the monarchy forward into the modern world. And certainly, when you look at who is left, it's a very, very slimmed-down version now, isn't it? Yeah, the, the king has got his wish um, by, by rather accident rather than design. And certainly without Harry and Meghan, without sort of other key players on the, in, the, in the past, such as Prince Andrew, uh, that have obviously left um, either in disgrace or by their own fruition, then it's something that they need to think about. They need to think about how the children will be sort of uh, brought in in this transitional period. And uh, I think there's a lot to look forward to anyway. Now, while we've been talking about Wimbledon, apparently the Princess Royal and the late Queen rarely went to the tennis. Why is that? Well, it's interesting. I've seen these reports recently. I mean, the Queen only went four times, can you believe it, to Wimbledon. I mean, it's only down the the, the road in South London. Uh, apparently, uh, Princess Anne said it was cauldron-like. She didn't like the atmosphere of Wimbledon. Now, listen, I've been lucky enough to go a few times, and it's such an amazing sporting event. It's great that the Princess of Wales is the patron of the Lawn Tennis Association because we've seen how uh, how fantastically involved she is. You saw her playing tennis with Roger Federer earlier to sort of really give the, the, the championships a real sort of oomph because we've been looking forward to them. And uh, they, they've been fantastic over the last couple of weeks. So listen, I think the Royals were missing out on that one because uh, what a fantastic occasion it has been over the years. Great reporting from the Mirror. I really enjoyed those this week. Now, last week, President Joe Biden had an audience with the King at Windsor Castle. We're obviously suckers for a bit of pomp and circumstance here at the Royal Report. Let's have a quick look. The King is often uh, criticised in Britain for being old, but next to the President, he looks positively virile. <laughs> well, you know, I you know, do a lot of engagements with the King and uh, he certainly is, sort of, uh, doesn't belies his 74 years. I mean, he's pretty sprightly. You know, he still gets all, all around his, uh, his estates, loves his gardening, still keeps pretty fit. And I think that uh, Joe Biden has certainly been criticised in the past, hasn't he? But what I found when we've seen these two guys um, sort of greeting each other, there was a huge warmth between them. And certainly Britain rolled out the red carpet. Joe Biden was at number 10 very briefly and then came to Windsor uh, to see that fantastic um, guards parade that you just saw there. And look, at you talking about the warmth, there was certainly a, a real... You know, character, characteristics between these two men, they, they're certainly of a certain age. Uh, they both have been fighting for climate change and they've definitely got a lot in common. And you can see that, uh, that they certainly enjoy each other's company. Now, lastly, uh, unlike Prince Philip, Queen Camilla isn't going to receive funding from Parliament. Can you explain the background to this? Well, certainly, this has emerged that the King has uh, essentially told Parliament that the Queen will not be receiving an annuity from uh, the government. And this was when Prince Philip was with us. He was receiving about £360,000, I think that's about $500,000 per year, to run his personal affairs. Now, this was outside the sovereign grant, which is obviously the money that is given to the royal family to run the business of the firm. Now, the fact that Camilla will not be taking this money, I think this is a fantastic thing because we're all living in a sort of cost of living crisis. Criticism from the royal family very recently with the royal finances, over £100 million they're costing us once more. You know, listen, this all boils down to about $2 per person here in the UK, and I think that's pretty good value for money. Now, the, the, the Queen will take uh, the, the running of her offices from the King's personal finances. So, you know, they're saving us a few bobs, so who can argue with that? Russell Myers, thank you as always for your time. We'll speak shortly. Thanks, Caroline. My pleasure.